December 1994, the Green Bay Packers led the Atlanta Falcons 14-9 at Lambeau Field. Sterling Sharp is down. On first down, Packers running back Edgar Bennett took a carry over the left guard and was stopped for a short game. On the stat sheet, there's nothing about the play that stands out. But it changed the destiny of Green Bay's all-pro wide receiver, Sterling Sharp. I'm Steven Jackson, and in this episode of Legends, we look back at the short yet incredible career of Sterling Sharp. Injury may be the only reason that he's not in the Hall of Fame. Sterling was born April 6, 1965 in Chicago, Illinois. But after his father's death, the family moved to Glenville, Georgia. Without a dad, Sterling took a more active role in raising his younger brother, Shannon, who would go on to have a Hall of Fame career. More on that later. Sterling Sharp was a three-sport star at Glenville High. The university would come knocking. Sterling would accept a scholarship from the University of South Carolina. It would be a decision that South Carolina would not regret. During his time at Columbia, Sterling set South Carolina's single season records and career records for receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. He also made plays like this. In 1986, Sterling Jr. year made him a household name. He set school records with 74 receptions for 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. It was the first time a Gamecock wide receiver would eclipse 1,000 yards and the mark stood for nearly 20 years. And his record for receptions? Well, that stood for 21. Going into 1988 NFL Draft, Sterling and two future Hall of Fame wide receivers were atop of many rankings. Notre Dame Tim Brown, and Miami's Michael Irvin. Brown, the 1987 Heisman Trophy winner, went first to the Los Angeles Raiders with the sixth pick. Sterling was taken seventh by the Green Bay Packers. Irvin went 11th to Dallas Cowboys. As rookies in 1988, Sterling started all 16 games, caught 55 passes, and led the Packers in receiving with 791 yards, more than Brown and Irvin. But the following year was the year that he broke out in a big way. He led the league in receptions with 90. He finished the second in yards with 1,400 yards and caught 12 touchdowns, also second in the NFL. He was named to his first Pro Bowl as well as the first team All-Pro. The Packers went from a 4-12 team to a 10-6 and team and just missing the playoffs. The next two years were down years for the franchise, but not for Sterling, who would continue to pile up catches, yards, and touchdowns. Then two things happened. Green Bay Packers hired Mike Holmgren, and they traded for a quarterback by the name of Brett Favre. After starting the 1992 season 0-2, the Packers won nine of their final 14 games. Sterling led the league with 108 receptions, 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns, and becoming just the 10th player in the league history to earn the receiver triple crown. It's only happened twice in the last 30 years. And even though Green Bay missed the playoffs that year, Sterling finished fourth in the MVP voting. The next season, Sterling picked up where he left off, putting together another incredible Pro Bowl and All-Pro season. And this time, Green Bay was headed to the playoffs for the first time in his career. In his first career playoff game, Sterling went off. He would have three touchdowns, including a 40-yarder that would put them over the rivals Detroit Lions, 28-24. Unfortunately, the Packers lost the following week to the eventual Super Bowl champions, the Dallas Cowboys, although Sterling scored in that game too. The next year began with a lot of promise and continued the same way until week 16 when Green Bay hosted the Atlanta Falcons and Sterling got hurt. While trying to set a block on the edge on a forgettable run play, Sharp took a blow to the head from Atlanta's defensive back, Brian Edwards, a former teammate of his at the University of South Carolina. Sterling fell to the turf in agony and left the game. The Packers called it a stinger, so he suited up a week later against Tampa Bay. In the final game of the regular season, and what turned out to be the last game of 112 straight games he played in his career, Sterling had another mind-blowing performance. 
but the pain in his neck didn't cease. After he experienced numbness and tingling in his limbs, Sterling was diagnosed with a dangerous issue with his spine that would require fusion surgery. His career was over. Two years later, Green Bay would go on to win a Super Bowl. The closest Sterling would come to winning a ring of his own came after Super Bowl 32, when his brother, eventual Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp, won the Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos, defeating Green Bay. After the win, Shannon, who grew up idolizing his older brother and wearing the same jersey number as him, he gave him his ring. My big brother Sterling, I'm the only pro football player that's in the Hall of Fame, and I'm the second best player in my own family. The fate had dealt your different hand. There's no question. There's absolutely no question in my mind. We would have been the first brothers to be elected to the Hall of Fame. From 1988 to 1994, Sterling Sharp was a monster at wide receiver position, and he never missed a game in his seven-year career. And when he stopped playing, Sterling had 8,134 yards, 1,000 more yards than Michael Irving, and 3,000 more yards to Tim Brown at that same point of their Hall of Fame careers. So, should Sterling be in the Hall? Clearly he would have been if it wasn't for the injury. Was not for the bait? Sterling Sharp is Green Bay's greatest wide receiver. One of the greatest in the 1990s, and without a doubt, a legend.